On the 18th of January 1977, Indira Gandhi sprang a surprise by announcing Lok Sabha elections after a 19-month-long emergency, India's darkest chapter in its post-independence history. In an announcement on All India Radio, Indira said, The nation was far from normal when the emergency was imposed. The election can be held now. It's being nursed back to health. Indira's choice of words was ironic. One of the worst excesses of the emergency had been the violation or the brutalization of people's bodies as a government had forced men and women to undergo sterilization procedures in a nationwide population control program. All across India, men and women, single and married, young and old, with and without children had been randomly rounded up from their homes, fields, buses and railway stations, hospitals and cinema halls. They were taken to camps where sterilization procedures were carried out in crude and unhygienic conditions. Tubectomy procedures had left scores of women dead. Seething with anger and intent on revenge, people finally voted out the Indira government in the 1977 elections. And with that, India's population control program came to an end. The very idea of family planning became a political hot potato that no political party wanted to touch in the decades to come, including the Janata Party government, which succeeded Indira. As a result, India's population control program suffered a long-term setback. Indira's younger son, Sanjay Gandhi, had been the driving force behind the compulsory sterilization program. He had a burning political ambition to establish himself as a Congress leader and a successor to his mother. Sanjay announced his own five-point development program, which included adult education, family planning, tree plantation, abolition of dowry and eradication of the caste system. He ordered state chief ministers and government officials to set unreasonable targets for sterilization. As a result, in 1976-77, there were 81 lakh cases of sterilization, three times more than the year earlier. Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan and other states in North India saw the highest and most brutal cases. In comparison, in 1977-78, after the Muraji Desai government assumed power, the number of voluntary sterilization cases dropped to just 5 lakhs. As with population control, Sanjay Gandhi was obsessed with clearing away slums which he saw as an eyesore. In the Turkman Gate area in Old Delhi, his family planning program was combined with the demolition of slums. In April 1976, the Delhi administration began to raise slums. Sterilization camps had already been set up before the bulldozers arrived. It was a deadly and brutal combination. Police fired on people who resisted sterilization and more than a dozen died. Significantly, India was the first country in the world to launch a family planning program on a large scale way back in 1951, but with limited success. Dr. Karan Singh, Minister of Health and Family Planning, wrote to Indira in 1976, saying the problem is now so serious that there seems to be no alternative but to think in terms of introducing compulsion. Indira too advocated an element of force in population control. Referring to family planning, she said in January 1976, we should not hesitate to take drastic steps in which some personal rights have to be kept in abeyance. India is still reeling from unchecked population growth for which the emergency's coercive and brutal family planning methods and the reluctance of later governments to go anywhere near the issue are responsible to a great extent. Today, the country has a population of 138 crores or 1.38 billion second only to China's, but set to surpass China by 2027. Nearly 40% of the population is below the poverty line, and despite decades of growth and progress, India's per capita income remains far lower than any of the developed countries or the so-called Asian tigers.